I'm pretty familiar with the films of Dennis Hopper, an actor I always love to watch, and I'm pretty well versed in the Western film genre. Something I don't know anything about is Australia, and those three factors all come together in today's film. This is the Kazdoy Closet. I'm Kazdoy. That's my closet full of all the stuff that I love. And today, the first Australian film to really break through in the United States. Let's check it out. Today's film is Mad Dog Morgan from 1976. It's either 103 minutes or 95 minutes, depending on which version you watch. And it's in color. And in fact, this is the box. So I'm going to hold up instead the uh, disc that has the artwork on it. Um, this takes place during the Australian gold rush of the 1860s and it's based on a documented fact it says at the beginning of the film. It's the story of a folk hero slash outlaw Daniel Mad Dog Morgan. He's played by Dennis Hopper in this film with Hopper's usual intensity and uh, he has an Irish accent in this and a beard that seems to get longer throughout the film and sometimes looks okay sometimes I'm wondering, is that a fake beard or not? Um, but there's no real character arc to Dennis Hopper's character. More on that later, because in fact, there's no real character development to any characters in this film. He made this between Easy Rider and Apocalypse Now. Now, when Francis Ford Coppola was going to make Apocalypse Now, he contacted the director of this film, and they had a screening, because he wanted to know if he recommended working with Dennis Hopper. And the director of this film thought that Dennis Hopper was basically still playing Mad Dog Morgan in Apocalypse Now. And also, Hopper and Brando did not get along well at all in that film. But uh, other actors considered for this role included Stacey Keach, uh, Martin Sheen, and Jason Miller of The Exorcist. The only other actor I recognize in this is an uh, Aborigine uh, uh, actor named David Gilpalil. And uh, he uh, sort of becomes his partner in robbing people because he nurses uh, Morgan back to health after he got shot. Um, the film that I am most familiar with this actor is Walkabout. And in fact, uh, in the middle of the film, the actor went on a walkabout, didn't tell anybody because he was trying to figure out how to deal with Dennis Hopper's drug and alcohol use, his excessive use, during the making of the film. So. Gil Palil had to go out to nature and communicate with nature to see how to come to terms with that. And eventually he came back and finished the film, of course. The director, Philippe Mora, I'm not familiar with. I did, I believe, see his documentary about the depression called Brother Can You Spare a Dime. Visually, beautiful film, a kind of John Ford-esque, I think, with the Australian scenery and the colors just magnificent. Um, apparently, it's very authentic as far as the costumes and the props and the accents go. I mentioned Hopper had an Irish accent in this, and according to the director, there was no such thing as an Australian accent at this point in time. Um, at the beginning, there's a massacre of a small group of people, and uh, it's pretty graphic and pretty bloody, and I thought, oh, this is going to be a graphic, bloody film. I didn't expect that. But that's really the only scene that's like that. And then soon thereafter, I'm talking like the first 10 minutes of the film, Morgan is sent to a, a rather uh, unsavory prison and some rather unsavory things happen to him that are kind of graphic. Uh, other than that, um, it's really not that graphic or bloody for the rest of the film. The film basically consists of Morgan seeking revenge against people who either wronged him or are hunting for him. and. Unfortunately, I found this rather disjointed because he's basically, he's going from place to place, encountering one or two people. They have a conversation or a conflict or somebody gets shot. Then he goes to the next scene, same thing happens. It almost seemed like a series of vignettes instead of scenes building upon each other. Uh, no real tension involved. Um, was, I was, it wasn't what I would call an engrossing film, at least for me. Um, the driving force is supposed to be that the military is um, trying to capture him. So it always kind of goes back to some military guys who are not very likable, plotting uh, what to do to him and how to find him and all that stuff. But even that, I didn't feel there was much tension there. Uh, Morgan himself comes off pretty sympathetic, I thought. He's more of a Robin Hood type character when he's robbing people. He doesn't hurt anybody who's innocent. 
Um, but there's no real backstory on him. Like I said, there's no character arc. We don't know uh, where he came from. We don't know why he is the way he is. He just is that way. He starts off kind of um, unhinged and continues unhinged throughout the film. But, you know, he's interesting to watch. Um, he, you know, Dennis Hopper is always interesting. It's beautiful to look at. I just wish I had learned more about uh, this character because I didn't know anything about him at all. But I didn't really learn much by the end of the film. Um, so, you know, even though it looks good and he's good, it's, I'm, I'm going to give it a disappointing two and a half horses out of five. So, uh, what's on this disc? Well, it's a good one. This is from Indicator. And let me show you a few things. First of all, like I said, it comes in this nice hard box, which is always nice. And on the back, you can see there's a lot of extra stuff back there. I'll talk about a little bit of that. There is a poster which shows two different versions of the poster art. This is the one that I think came out in the US. In the US it was just called Mad Dog. And in the Australia it was Mad Dog Morgan. And there's all these great blurbs. The critics seem to like it, but I don't know. It just did not work for me. I didn't hate it, but I just I couldn't get that into it. Nice, perfect bound booklet, about 80 pages. And I thought, actually, to be honest, I was a little, it was a little daunting. I thought, I don't know anything about this guy. I'm gonna have to read up and find the history of this guy and try to make, make it sound like I know what I'm talking about. I didn't really learn much about this guy. It's mostly about the film in here. So it was fine, but that's mostly what it is. And then you have uh, different artwork uh, on this, uh, this sleeve here sort of like the poster artwork. So extras, plenty of extras on here. There's a couple of audio commentaries, which I did not listen to. There are um, several uh, interviews with the director, some new, a new one and an old one with uh, him talking to Dennis Hopper. There is a uh, sort of a location shooting a documentary, which doesn't look very good uh, visually. And you really don't learn much. It's just a lot of shots of them making the film and Dennis Hopper acting kind of weird and stuff. And um, other cast and crew members, two different cuts. There's a director's cut and the US UK theatrical cut. That's the one I watched. And I'm sure I'm leaving something out, but um, there's a lot of stuff on here. And the, the special features range anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour long and everything in between. And it looks good and it sounds good. Um, I don't think you can find the box version anymore, unless you want to pay a lot but you can find this one for a reasonable price. Otherwise, you can find it streaming somewhere, I'm not sure. It might be on YouTube, that's possible. You can also try your local library. So, a little disappointed, and I don't like to put down films because I'm sure it's a monumental task to get these made. This was fairly low budget, actually, $400,000 budget, and they shot it in six weeks. So that makes me think maybe that beard was a fake beard after all. Anyways, uh, hope you like this one. Um, Feel free to leave a comment or suggestion down here. Maybe you've seen this film. Maybe I'm way off on it. Uh, or your favorite Dennis Hopper film. There's a lot of them. Blue Velvet comes to mind. Uh, River's Edge. A whole lot. Uh, leave a thumbs up. Don't leave a thumbs down. Subscribe would be great. Getting close to 300 subscribers. Just need like eight more right now. Share this with your friends and neighbors. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. See you next time.